Hey guys, um, so this is the first video about meiosis and I wanted to make sure we're all on the same page. So we will start talking about chromosomes and we will start on the karyotype. So if you if you look at the video, at the, the PowerPoint, I have a line of karyotype, you see a bunch of chromosomes next to each other and I'm only going to represent uh, four pairs here. And I'm going to make one really small and one really long here. Okay, so um, the karyotype, if you look at that uh, slide, has 23 pairs in humans, right? And you have one pair that's a sex chromosome. To make sure we're all on the same page here, if we focus on only four pairs, so that will be one, that will be two, that will be three, that will be four, the key to understand the karyotype is to realize that each and one each and every one of those bars is a distinct chromosome, right? And they go two by two because they're part of a homologous pair. So if we focus on this one here, this is homologous pair number four. What do I mean by that? What does that mean? Uh, that means that those chromosomes carry the same genes, right? So if you think of it as a... Uh, I don't know, the allele for color of the eyes, and we talk about green eyes. Uh, where is that going to, someone with green eyes will have two copies of green for the eye color. And where is that? So that those alleles, that code for a color, a specific color, they are placed in, at the, they are situated at the gene locus, right? So the eye color gene locus is on chromosome 4 of the pair number 4 and it's going to be here and it's by definition at the same place on the homologous chromosome. So those are the locations, the loc loci, where uh, the gene for the eye color is. And since we have homologous chromosomes, two in each pair, we have two copies of that gene. And someone with two copies of green will have green eyes, right? That's pretty much the key here, is to understand that each of those chromosomes here carry the same genes on, on, the, on, them, on them. They don't have to carry the same allele. An individual may have uh, green eyes and brown eyes, for example, the alleles, and it would express brown eyes. Brown eyes is dominant. And that's what it was the answer in the lab from last week. Uh, from two weeks ago, sorry, from week 12, the answer to that lab when they were asking you, uh, can you know the genotype? No, you can, because you can be heterozygous, right? And also uh, in the lab when we were out of the PCR and the gel electrophoresis, the question about one or two band, well, simply one or two bands, you see one band if you carry the same copy of uh, the NTR at the time, you know, the various tandem repeats, short repeats, because each of those uh, alleles were coding for, uh, was coding for different length of repeat. In this case here, we're talking about eye color, and those two alleles might differ only by the sequence of uh, DNA bases and not by their length. So you would see only one band at the end of the electrophoresis. It's really important that you start wrestling with that when we talk about, when we, you know what we talk about when we say allele sequence, from those genes, for, for that gene of eye color, those two alleles might have a different sequence, but they might, they probably have the same length on the DNA. What changes is the order of the DNA bases. Therefore, when you change when you look at transcription and translation, you then look at the code on code, and it might, it will or not have repercussions for the proteins. In this case, green and blue is simply the proteins coding for uh, receptors in your eyes. Because remember, you see you see what is not absorbed, you see what is reflected. So if a protein has a different shape in your eye, you may reflect different color, therefore your eyes will be different color. That doesn't mean that your length of DNA is different, that just means the sequence of DNA, therefore the sequence of RNA, therefore the sequence of, on the, of cotton, therefore the sequence of a protein, therefore the protein's uh, structure and function. Primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary structure will change based on the amino acid sequence. Really, like, let's try to tie all of that together. 
So now that we know that when we look at a karyotype, we look at homologous pair, meaning, meaning that each chromosome put together carry the same genes, not necessarily the same alleles. As you can see, it cannot be green and brown for the eye color. Now we know that, we need to also realize that a karyotype only shows you unreplicated chromosome. So what do I mean by that? Let's, uh, let's make a, a little focus on uh, the chromosome pair number four once again. So we're still going to stay on the homologous chromosome number four. And we're still going to have an individual with green eye and an individual with uh, brown eye here. And so now uh, the question is, uh, and I'm going to make some more space for us to work with here. So those two are homologous, they carry the same genes. We want to focus on the gene coding for the eye color. And each chromosome has a centromere. And since they're homologous, they have a centromere at the same space. Okay, so those two chromosomes, although they might not look like that because I'm not such a good drawer, <laughs> they are homologous, they carry the same genes. That one carry the allele for green eye, that one carry for the allele for brown eye. That's in a cell, normal, and that cell is called diploid, a cell, so let, let me just say, that's not before. So that cell will be diploid because it has two chromosomes for each homologous pair. We focus on one pair, but diploid simply means 2n, n being the number of pairs. So in humans it's 23, in that case we had four only, but... 2n just means it has two copies diploid, two copies of each chromosome, two copies of each gene. Okay. Now when you do mitosis that we've seen last week, you see replication. Replication, since it's semi-conservative, means you make a second copy of each uh, DNA molecule. You remember you open it up, right? And then you make the corresponding copy. So each bar here, it's actually a double-stranded piece of DNA here. And what happens when you do replication, you make a second strand on the other side. So the second strand, I'm going to make it in black too. But do remember that uh, those second strands are made of half of the old and half of the new, right? Because each bar here, if you think about the replication, each bar, it's two uh, strands of nucleotides, complementary strands, and that's two more strands. So when you replicate the chromosome, actually half of that strand is now there, and they are half new each other, okay? So when you do replication, you see chromosomes looking like that, and when they look like that, they still have all of the same information, but it has to be the same, you just replicated it. So the copies are little g and big B, green and brown eyes. And in that case, you have two replicated chromosomes. So diploid can be 2n equal, uh, in the case we were talking about, four chromosomes uh, in humans. Let's talk about humans, 23 chromosomes. You can be diploid, uh, 23 pairs. You can be diploid with 2n equal 46. Or after replication, you can be replicated with 2n equal 92, right? Because you double the number of molecules of DNA. Okay. So do realize that when you go through replication, you do see four alleles here, but they are actually coming from two uh, different alleles, from two different homologous chromosomes. Okay, so now we've covered the karyotype, we've covered homologous chromosome, we've covered diploid, and when we'll talk about meiosis, we'll see what haploid means, because uh, mitosis, the process of of replicating the chromosomes, and then you will separate those homologous, the sister chromatids. You will separate the sister chromatid of each homologous chromosome to make two new sets of little gb and little gb, and it's, it will lead to two diploid cell. Meiosis go from diploid cell to haploid cell, and half from half, and haploid cell. It's not anymore two n; it's n. And in that case, uh, during meiosis, n can be equal to uh, 46, because you have uh, 23 times 2. But it can, in, in, during the process, it will be divided again. So we'll talk about meiosis in the next video. For now, I'm going to leave it there. Keep that in mind. Karyotype, homologous chromosomes, alleles, position on the, G on the chromosome we call locus. That's where the genes are found. And the alias is the sequence, keep in mind what it means when we talk about sequence, 
And of course, depending on what you do with your PCR, either you do a VNTR PCR for uh, criminal purposes or for sequencing, you would do PCR just to know the different type of coloration of your eyes. You may need to do sequencing because the difference between the green and brown alleles might not be the length of those alleles. They might be same length, but it might be just the sequence because it only needs to change the, uh, the protein structure. Okay, that's it for this video.